Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about time efficiency. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, I am a software developer. I have all the knowledge about my work, but I'm not time effective or efficient. I do my work, but it takes me extra t more time than others. What should I do? Well, there's not much you can do. Uh, this is uh, this is tricky, but fundamentally you can't really do much about the speed that you saw like, at the speed that you work. Uh, apart from practicing, learning, improving your skills, and so forth, uh, it's it, this. I know that this is a tough pill to swallow because everybody. I mean, I mean, I do it as well. I I, I mean, I remember when I was a junior developer, it was even worse. Where I ha and I still do. I still have this anxiety where I feel like if I'm dealing with a problem that I can't solve fast enough, things like that, you get a little bit anxious. And I think that that is the most human thing in the world. You, we do want to do things well. And the worst part about it is usually that, well, depending on how humble you are, because you can become an arrogant prick as well. Uh, the better you get, and like the harder product, like it doesn't really go away. Because like you're, you do, uh, you start by not feeling that you're doing a good job, and then you start feeling like you're kind of doing a good job, and then maybe you get some praise for doing a good job, and all of a sudden, shit! Now, whenever you make a mistake, you beat yourself up even like ten times worse because you made a mistake. When people think that you're so good, and you get prestige involved, and all of a sudden, like now you're not. Uh, concerned anymore with whether or not you're going to meet the deadline, you're going to go, oh shit, I'm not going to be able to deliver early, which is usually what I do, which is going to also be a negative, it becomes this really dumb spiral where you're trying to over deliver and you're stressing out over the fact that you're not over delivering. And so this is, it really comes down to personal security here, my friend. And it's the, sa it's the same insecurity that you're going to face when you're dealing with something like time estimations, because it's a, a very few developers, I would say nobody, nobody loves, uh, likes time estimations. And the reason why I th that that is, at least what I believe, is because you feel as there is this commitment that you've made. You've made a commitment, you stated that you're going to do something in a certain amount of time, which fundamentally is more or less a promise. Even if you're not promising, you're saying that it should be about this time. So it's sort of like a promise. And the thing is, some people are very conscious about the expectations other people have on them. And some people are so conscious about them, and especially people who are what I like to, like I like to call them people pleasers, they're so conscious and about others' opinions and thoughts and feelings that they, in many cases, they project their own fears, like they're internalizing a lot of their own insecurities to the point where they feel like they're letting other people down and sure, in some situations that might be the case, but in many cases they're just beating themselves up over something that may uh, that is really beyond their control, if that makes sense. As an example, uh, if you wanted to start getting into, say, running or jogging or something like that, well you're going to have to start at some point and you know that there are some runners who are going to be faster faster than you and some runners are going to be slower than you and when you start running and you start like trying to do the, to do this on a regular basis you're going to recognize most likely depending on where you go right some runners who you've seen a few times before and some of them are going to be really really fast and they're just going to pass you and some of them are going to be a little bit slower maybe than you and you're going to pass them and try to, I mean, you've probably done this at some point. It's very interesting, I think, to reflect a little bit on what is your mental state when you're seeing all of this stuff. Like when you see a coworker go home early, what do you think about that coworker? Do you think anything at all? What do you think about, um, like, do, do you, like, what is your thought process around people that you just see or that do something? What are you thinking about them? Because if you have a lot of thoughts about what everybody else is doing, even though you don't really know what the situation is, then 
that I will argue is an indicator that you may be overthinking things because if you really can come down to it what should you do if you're not uh, you're not as fast as your coworkers like what could you do should you try to like find easier tasks i mean i've seen that i've seen and it doesn't work for long i've seen developers who very who sub is are very subtle they pick stories that they know are safe and they avoid any of the real work and you're like that's a crutch at like at, at i mean at best they're going to be able to maintain that to a certain point and in many cases there's like it's still going to shine through there's you're not actually like it's like putting down the <laughs> lowering the weights just so that you can do uh, like so you, so it <laughs> so you can feel better about yourself rather than trying to get stronger and what I'm trying to tell you here is just that I know that this sucks to hear but there's nothing you can do about how fast you are at software development because it really comes down to one I mean the, the, the good part is that just as with any skill the more practice you get the better you're gonna get at it the other part is that some people are faster and smarter than other people it's just as I was saying with the jogging it doesn't matter if you jog for the rest of your life at some point you're going to like even if you become like an elite you're going to realize that unless you are the world's best and even if you are it's probably at some point going to that record is going to be beaten by somebody else someone will come along who had they have a better genetic makeup than you do and they're going to beat you and it really the only thing you can really do is to affect your own perception of what's going on and this sucks my best tip is to let experience set in to just accept that this is something that you're gonna have to go through just as everybody else it's no different from puberty or anything like uh, or like your is sweaty having I don't know going to your first dance or whatever it's something that is new to you it's something that you're not very good at and just as with everything that you're not very good at uh, good at when you do it and you feel insecure in the thing you just have to you just have to soldier through that's what it comes down to is this thing important enough to you that you can accept the fact that you're going to feel fear and anxiety and realize that those things are not going to kill you you're not going to get you're not going to get damaged by the fact that you're afraid all you have to do is to accept that this is a temporary thing because i promise you if you continue for long enough you're going to it's going to go away because the things that you are insecure about are usually things that you are inexperienced with or things that you're not so good at and if you do anything for long enough you're going to get good at it and you can't really do much more because at the end of the day you can't control what other people think about you and that is i argue the most healthy mindset that you can have if you go in and you do your best the only thing you have to think about is that this is as well as I can do at this moment and I'll try to reflect on how I can be a better software developer if it is enough or not that's not my business that's for my manager to say so what I want you to take away from this is that if you take longer than your coworkers to do things there's not much you can do uh, you are the person you are you have the skills that you have the only thing you can do is to continue to try to improve and I can promise you that if you do that for long enough you will start to feel more secure in your role just as with anything uh, the more seniority you have the less anxiety you will feel over the work that you do and the more secure you will be I remember still when I was afraid to give anybody like a bad estimate in time or anything like that because I'm a uh, I'm me yes many other people are people pleasers you want your managers and your stakeholders to be happy so you try to make uh, you try to say things that you think will please them until you start to realize that that is just a, it's a very dangerous thing to do and then before you long you realize that hey actually now I'm so experienced that most people are like I can just kinda do my thing and sure sometimes I have to disappoint people but I'm capable of dealing with it because I have a track record of experience and good uh, and, and, and and good encounters with these people so that like they, they're still happy and I promise you guys that's like this is how you get mature like that's experience it's maturity experience seniority all that good stuff you just have to accept that you're going to spend some time usually many years and it's not just professionally it's going to be part you know in the, your private time as well 
where you're going to be scared and realize that fear is just that it's just an emotion it's something that you don't you don't have to let it control you you just have to live with it until it stop uh, until it goes away have a great day